Hello, in this video we are going to do some problems using the law of sines and the law of cosines. Our first example shows a sliding glass door with an awning, otherwise known as a roof, and the awning makes a 50 degree angle with the glass door and we can assume that this is a right angle because that's standard construction and then again we can assume that this is a right angle since the wall or the door and the ground will make a 90 degree angle of standard construction and the objective of the awning is to block the sun uh, when the sun makes an angle of 65 degrees with the ground and so we've got a couple angles here and we can use those angles and our parallel lines to find some other angles 88 inches is our measurement there. Well, we know this is a 90 degree angle because these two are supplementary. We know that 65 in this angle is equal to 90, so this must be 25 degrees. And then we can see that the awning, the underside of the awning there and the ground will be parallel, and so we know this is 65 degrees. 65, 25, and 90 also equals 180. And then since this is 50, we know that this is 40 degrees because 50, 40, and 90 is 180 for the sum of angles in a triangle. And now we can use the law of sines. We know all of our angles. We know uh, one side. And so let's take a look at this big triangle here along the outside. And our missing value is over here. We're calling it L. And so in order to find that, we're going to use the law of sines right here. Sine times some angle over the opposite side. So we're going to say L is that first opposite side. Uh, and then the opposite angle is 25. So we've got sine 25 over L is equal to, uh, and then we've just got B and C. We can pick either of these two angles. Since we know the length of this side, we want to minimize our number of unknowns and so we're going to say the angle opposite of the known side length is 105 so that is equal to sine 105 over 88 and we're just going to do some simple algebra multiply by L on both sides multiply by 88 and then divide by sine 105 and we get L is equal to 88 sine 25 over sine 105 or L is equal to 38.5 inches. That one was pretty easy. Next we're going to look at a problem using the law of cosines. The law of cosines is a little more involved than the law of sines. And so law of, law of sines is basically just ratios of uh, sine values to the lengths of sides. And so the law of cosines is slightly more detailed. They're involving a little more algebra. So we've got a guy wire. I don't know why it's called a guy wire, but let's draw ourselves a picture here. We've got a radio tower, and the tower, of course, is going to make a 90 degree angle with the ground because otherwise it would fall over. That whole radio tower from top to bottom has a length or a height of 500 feet. Right, and then we know the midpoint here has a wire attached to it and that wire is again attached to the ground 100 feet from the tower itself and then on the other side of the tower we've got a hill that it goes up an angle of 10 degrees. We know that otherwise we would have a right angle here and so the remaining degrees there are 80 and then we have another cable that runs from the top of the radio tower coming down to that hillside uh, and then that length there up on the hillside is again 100 feet and so we want to know how long these two values are here we're going to call this one H because we do have just a simple right triangle uh, with a side here of 250. We know it's halfway up the tower, which has a total length of 500. We know the base there is 100, and so we can solve for B relatively simply here. 
we've got h squared equals the two the sum of the two sides squared so 250 squared plus 100 squared or we can take a square root of h squared and we get h and then we're going to take a square root of 250 squared plus 100 squared and we get h is equal to 269.26 feet or round off to 269.3 feet circle our answer and then for a we're going to use the law of cosines and we're going to call c squared I'm going to call this C. This cable length is the side that we're looking for. We know the angle opposite of it. We know that uh, this angle here, well, we don't even need to know that angle. We can skip that. We know the other two sides. And so we're going to say C squared is equal to the sum of squares of the two other sides. We've got 500 squared and 100 squared. 500 squared plus 100 squared and then just following along plugging in a and b there and we're going to say minus 2 times 100 or 500 times 100 and then we're going to multiply that by cosine of our angle opposite the side that we're looking uh, to solve for and that angle is 80 degrees and again we know that because the tower would otherwise make a 90 degree angle with the ground uh, which we are assuming would be flat had it not been for that 10 degree incline there sorry for my messy penmanship with this old tablet here and so we get c squared is equal to 242,635 point one eight and again we're in feet we're going to take the square root there and we get c is equal to four hundred ninety two point five eight or point six feet circle our answer and so those were relatively simple problems using law of cosines and the law of sines the last problem we're going to do today is a little bit more involved it has several parts not that one we got the cow problem and so we have a cow we are farmers and we have a cow and we have a barn and that cow is tied to a hundred foot rope and then it can circle around using the corn lower left corner of that barn there it can circle around and get three quarters of the way around that circle before the pivot point changes to the upper left corner of that barn and the lower right corner of that barn where we make two different sectors which have radius of a radii of 90 and so the area of these two sectors does not match the uh, area of a sector with the same central angle if we just took that as a ratio or as a part of this larger circle so a1 is pretty easy to solve for we know the area of a circle is equal to three quarters oops sorry we know the area of a whole circle is equal to pi r squared and so the area of three quarters of a circle is just three quarters times pi r squared and that's pi times 90 squared and that's just simple arithmetic sorry not pi times 90 pi times 100 squared 90 is our radius for these smaller sectors and so 3 pi times 100 squared divided by 4 gives us our a1 a1 is equal to 23,561.95 feet. So that was the easy part. And then it gets a little more complicated for the remainder. Let's take a look at A3 and the barn here. First of all, we're going to chop this barn in half. So if we had our full barn, it would look something like that. And then we've got our A3, which runs from the corners of that barn up to the perimeter or the circumference or where these two arcs meet. And then we've got this kind of imaginary bisector line. Uh, we're just going to chop that in half. We're going to forget about this part. And so if we drop an altitude down the middle of this, uh, these are equal sides because the barn has 
equal side length here, 10 and 10. And then we know that this part of the barn, let's erase that. We know that the unknown, we know that the uh, diagonal of that barn is 10 root 2 uh, because it is an isosceles, but an isosceles right triangle here. This is, of course, a 90 degree angle. It was part of a square. And so 10 root 2 is 10 squared plus 10 squared is 200. We're going to take the square root of 200 to find our hypotenuse there. Square root of 200 is 10 times root 2. And so we're going to use that knowing that we have 90 feet and 90 feet. We want to know what is this whole length here, L, or we could say H for height. Well, we can split up our 10 root 2 into two smaller 2 subsections here. We're just going to split that in half, get 5 root 2 and 5 root 2. Okay, because we know when we drop an altitude down an isosceles right triangle, it's going to split these two in half, and we're actually going to get a third uh, segment there. We're going to get a third side or a third segment of equal length, and that's going to be 5 root 2 in there. All right, we could figure that out. We can call this x if we want to figure it out by hand. We would say uh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and say 10 squared is equal to uh, 5 root 2 squared quantity 5 root 2 squared plus x squared, and then we'll get 100, right? 5 root 2 squared is 5 squared, which is 25. Root 2 squared is 2. 25 times 2 is 50, and so we're going to carry out some simple operations here. We get 100. We can subtract from that 5 root 2 squared, which is 50, and we're going to get x squared. We can take a square root of 50 equals x, and that also equals 5 root 2. And again, whenever we drop an altitude bisecting the right angle of an isosceles right triangle, then that altitude becomes a leg in a new right triangle, a new isosceles right triangle, uh, where half of the original hypotenuse of that isosceles right triangle then becomes one of the two equal legs. All right, so x equals 5 root 2. We're going to take that, looking at this triangle going from, again, this corner up here where these two arcs meet down to the center of the barn. I'm going to try to find that length or that height of that triangle. And we can do that using the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got the one side length squared, L squared plus 5 root 2 quantity squared is equal to 90 squared, 90 feet squared. And so we're going to get L squared equals 90 squared minus 5 root 2, or L squared equals 80, 50. Right, and then we get L is equal to the square root of 8,050, or approximately 89.72. All right, and so since we know the barn is not part of the area in which the cow can graze, we want to subtract this half of the barn from our calculations for A3. And we're going to come up with something kind of like Half A3 looks like that there. We've got 90 on one side, and on one side here we've got L minus X, or 82.65, and then we've got 10 on this side. I'm going to solve for, I'm going to solve for A2 first, uh, because we need to know this angle, right? So if this rope is just the side of the barn extended out to the perimeter, the circumference of the circle, then this is a line segment. And since 
the barn is a square 10 by 10 that means that this angle of the rope and the side of the barn is also 90 degrees and so to find this central angle of the sector uh, we are going to uh, take 90 90 minus theta I'm going to call this theta I'm going to say 90 minus theta over 360 is our central angle there All right, so 90 minus theta over 360, we're looking for that theta. Uh, let's go back to A3 for a moment. We're going to apply the law of cosines. So if we uh, subtracted A squared, A squared, and B squared over to the other side, and then we divided by uh, negative 2AB, and we isolate cosine on one side, we're going to get cosine theta is equal to, in our case, side length of 90 squared plus 10 squared. So we've got one side length of 90, we've got another side length of 10. Uh, we're solving for theta here. And we're going to subtract from that the third side length uh, using, again this looks like it has some relationship to the Pythagorean theorem if you're following along here. So we've got that and it's all divided by 2 times AB or 2 times 90 and 10. All right, and so we get cosine theta is equal to 8200 minus 6831.14 all divided by. 1800 or 0.76 and so now we know that cosine theta is equal to this amount well remember from a previous lesson we can find theta now by taking the inverse of cosine at 0.76 say that equals theta and so theta is equal to 40.49 degrees right and so if theta equals 40.49 degrees, then we're going to go back here and we're going to solve uh, for A2. 90 minus theta uh, is equal to, well, I plugged it into the calculator, 90 minus 40.49, looks like about 49.51 degrees. 90 minus theta over 360. We're going to multiply that by the area of a circle pi, sorry for my messy tablet again, pi times 90 squared, let me just make that a little bit clearer, times pi 90 squared, and then we're going to multiply all that by 2 because we've got one sector, two sectors of equal area, and we finally get a 2 is equal to 6,999 point six feet. All right, now let's go back to our triangle, uh, this triangle here. And so we've got uh, base times height, base times height. We've got a, let's look at our bigger triangle. Let's take that triangle with a base of 10 root 2. take the larger triangle here uh, because it our a3 does cover both sides here we're looking for all this area in the green here and so if we split the barn in two uh, then we've got a side length here of 90 we've got an isosceles triangle here again 90 and across the middle we've got a base of 10 root 2 and so let's solve for area make our give ourselves a little bit of space here Solve for area. The area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. And so in order to find area three, we're going to say the base, 10 root two times the height, which is 89.72. Remember the square root of 8050, 89.72 divided by two. One half base times height, 
Uh, and then we're going to subtract from that 50, because that's the area of the barn here, or half the barn. Subtract 50 from that, and that will give us our A3. And let's put A3 down on the bottom with A1 and A2. A3 is then equal to 588.36 feet. And then if we add all these together, we are going to come up with 3, 000, sorry, 31,145.97 feet. And we're just going to knock off that 0.97 right, because we've had a couple of rounding. We've got a couple of values that were rounded. We're going to say this is close enough or approximately uh, the area of grazing. Right, so the cow has 31,145 square feet of grazing area. That's, is that enough grass? I would hope so, at least for a little while. Alright, so in the next video we're going to look at a little more trigonometry and sine functions with technology. Uh, and so hopefully you have a better understanding of law of sines and law of cosines for now. Thank you.